Remember, no need at all to have a current client or a current project to move forward with your next UX design case study. You can create a case study for any website you feel can make amazing change for it. I want to give you here a very inspirational UX design case study for someone called George Kavaznikov. And from his story, you will see how building a perfect UX design case study, even without being in contact with the website or the mobile app that you are building a case study for, can bring a great opportunity for you. So George created a great UX design case study for redesigning Google News. It took from him a couple of months, and I remember Google interviewed him for that case study. As you can see from his article on Medium, he explained the pain points and some statistics, which include the advantages and disadvantages of news websites. And he detailed some UX analysis and research he made for Google News website. He explained the features of the website, and then he created personas and user scenarios. Then he went to the information architecture with the sitemap. And after that, he started with sketching, wireframing, choosing the typography, and the mood board. Now I will jump to his Behance account and show his designs for the same project. And as you can see here, he has a video showing his work on material design. And the cool thing, he used Keynote to create this video. Let's have a look at it. And when you scroll down, you will see how he used Google Material Design and how he implemented cards on each page to make it more responsive and easy to use. Honestly, I'm amazed by his work and how he created such a great UX design case study without even being an employee with Google. He just found the opportunity and decided to make a change. I remember that at that time, Google Material Design was still a new trend. So this was a great shift and gave Google Material Design more credibility to be adopted in our community. After that, George became more famous, got more followers, and he worked with the famous fantasy company. Also, his case study helped me a lot to make a good redesign for a company I worked with called WN.com. They had a big news website and they wanted to make a big shift from their old design. So let's have a look at other case studies so we can get more inspiration. So here, like we have this website for someone called Abdus Salam. And let's have a look at his case study for improve family trust at senior living communities. And when you open the uh, case study, you will see this nice here image here. And when you scroll down, you will find the context that he has. And what I like in this context, the structure of this context, like we have this paragraph here talking about the project itself and his role, like at the user research, user stories and the platform and the year he worked on this project and what's the problem exactly. In addition to that, he clarified more about the solution and success metrics. He's detailing here some screens designed and when you scroll down, you will find the research finding for the project itself and you, those research findings, maybe those are the most important numbers, but here have some other research findings elements. And when you scroll down, you will find other designs for the app that he designed. In my opinion, the design, he can do it in a better way, but the way he went with the case studies looks really nice, especially the context that he has. And here he's showing the screenshot for the wireframe that he made. And here's the user flow from the beginning until the end. And he have this nice animation showing each day and what are the things that inside it yeah and um, now let's have a look at another case study for someone called Panheel mystery i really like his case study for a project called montero it's for adventure activity meta search engine 
The nice thing with, with his case study also, he have always buttons to click to view more about whether prototype or other links inside the case study itself. So he's showing here only the summary of the case study. So you will have here the summary. You have this nice image with it. And he have the deliverables that he worked on with the user experience, user interface and branding and the tools he used for his case study. Now he detail on more about challenge and uh, the solution. And when you scroll down, you will find those five main process that he worked on with the project he worked on. And we start with the discovery. And when you scroll down, you will find also user research and analysis. And he's showing some summary of analysis and responses for around 93 people. It looks really nice. And when you scroll down, you will have here you can see the user personas for the project and you can here have the link to view all personas and when you scroll down you will find the competitive analysis and uh, here like you have maybe a quick competitive analysis showing some main features about each website and you can view the SWOT analysis by clicking here and scrolling down you, he worked also in the information architecture the user type, the user story, and the reason. So re I really like his way of structuring even the case study that he's working on. And here he's showing more about the user flow and sitemap. And you can view all user flow here. And when you scroll down, you will see how he, ha he detailed the landing page from sketching to high fidelity or mid fidelity wireframes. The search results the same thing also and he you can here view all wireframes and you scroll down you will see more about the visual design branding and the cards like like whether cards vertical cards or even horizontal cards and he explaining each element about those cards preference tests and when we scroll down, you can find more about preference test reports. And here the logo design and he, how he worked on the logo design. And when you scroll down, he's showing also the color he used and typography and the style guide. So you can have a look at the style guide here and the development. He talked more about the development and the prototype, which he was on Marvel prototype and the conclusion for the case study. It's really a nice case study. Now let's go to another case study for someone called Yi Tang. And I'm showing here the case study for the EA games. And here how you see like the overview, the client, the role, and the nice thing here, like how long it took to complete the project and project overview like for example this is the problem finding a game worth playing is time consuming costly and take a lot of commitment the solution what if we can take the game discovery phase and transform it into part of the playing experience honestly i don't have a good background in gaming uh, industry for the user experience design but here i like how showing uh, what's the user doing and where he switch or take a decision and I guess here's the persona he's describing. And when you scroll down, you will find more about cards he used, designed, and how he put them on the game. And what's exactly the process he explained, like the define and here the week two, what he done and week three and week four and five. And what I really like, how we connect all those research and analysis part for uh, the project and here showing where all everything that uh, goes um, with combining all those uh, research analysis but i really like this design and showing here like recommendations like what exactly the problem and they define the user and the behavior of the user it's nice and when you scroll down you find more about uh, the journey mapping and scrolling down to more about maybe 
where exactly the sweet spot, for example, for making the player uh, really having fun and what are the other parts. It's really interesting thing. And showing also how organized ideas within a limited time, it's really limited time, only five weeks, and how design across platforms, mobile to desktop. So we have mobile first strategy. And we scroll down, you will find more about the screens and sketches that used. Scrolling down also, you will see this more explanation. Now showing more about the style guides that is used for the designs. Let's go to another case study. So this case study for, I guess, Nia Watkins. Her project is for clothing platform. So the client called Mirror. And shows also how long it took from here to do the project. And when you scroll down, you will find more about the research goal. And here, a quick competitive analysis. And then when you scroll down, you will find more about some interviews. And when you scroll down, you'll find more about those sticky notes. And you will see here the personas and storyboard creation. This is really nice storyboard. Scrolling down, you will find more about how to combine between business goals and user goals, which is really interesting. And when you scroll down, you will find more about the information architecture. I guess this information architecture being taken from Optimal Workshop, I guess. Let's scroll down. Here showing mirror site map. And you scroll down with the user flow. I guess if you click on it, you will find the whole text because a little bit cut here. It's fine. And here's we go with the design, with the logo, and all these stuff. And the colors being used. And here's the low fidelity wireframes. Here's the design. Cool. Looks nice case study. Now let's go to another case study. I really like this case study. It's for someone called Aya, I guess. Yeah, Aya Khalifa. Uh, she's showing her case study about the wind loan company Hose. And she detailing more about um, the project itself and the objectives of this case study. And she's showing more about the process that she worked on. Testing, analysis, define, ideate, uh, prototype, and validate. So she starts with personas, storyboard. Then went and go to guerrilla testing, which is, I guess, she just uh, interview with some people like on the street. This looks interesting. Uh, scrolling down, affinity mapping, and what exactly the problem. So she defining it. Scrolling down, you will see more about uh, the pain points. And how could be the design solution. Like here, she's showing before and after. This is really good thing, especially for projects that you do a redesign for it. It's really good to show how it looks before and how it looks after. Validation. And scrolling down, you will see more about the discovery view in my room, which is a really amazing thing. And here's prototyping. Sometimes it's really nice to have some funny drawings within your case study. Design solution, showing more about before and after and what exactly the change being made. I really like this view in my room. It looks interesting thing. It shows here more about the validation for the problem it's solved. Cool. We can have a look at other case studies like for Ueno, like Reuters News Mobile. It's they say they're showing more here about the context for the project itself. They're showing more about the mobile screens that they designed and they're trying to personalize the experience. Follow the news first thing first. And here they're showing how it looked like. 
Now I want to show a really interesting case study for uh, this guy. His name is Stain. And he created a case study for a sustainable outdoors brand from Germany. And uh, what I like on this case study, the personalized experience that he was focusing on. And when you scroll down, you will find this. I am a woman. I plan hiking for several days and I need an entire outfit. And you'll see this picture and the product with its price there. I guess you can click here and see the price and more about the product itself. So he's showing here more about his findings. And when you scroll down, you will see more about like the elements that he worked on, like personalized entry points and personal assistant for anything like if you want to go camping, this guy might help you. So it's more to like a lead magnet. He reduced the core navigation. And when you scroll down, you will see how they are using like images by their customers, which is really interesting things. And this would bring more loyalty to the product itself. And scrolling down, you will see how he have it very simple, very white. It's nice hiking gear for several trips. It's looking good work, honestly, whether design or the user experience. Good work, really good job. Okay, so let's have a look at another case study for someone called Dao Rong. She's a product designer. Uh, let's have a look at this project. It's called Five to Eight, genuine in-person networking for professionals. Showing here you networking, online networking. So only 18 person daily active users. Traditional networking events, a brand new in person networking experience, career changer. Interesting. Research findings. So they had, it seems, 10 online research reports and articles. Interview findings. So they found four major motivations and goals for networking jobs. Maintain long term, exchange information, relax and talk to. You will see more about problem and the barriers and sources of discomfort during networking. Now they have this survey finding. Eight questions, 53 persons. And they created then the personas. Nice work. And then they worked on the competitive analysis. And when you scroll down, you'll find more about the research and findings that they had. And here's the sitemap of mobile app. Scrolling down, you will start seeing the wireframes. Those are the wireframes also, and then usability testing and iteration. And here's the logo design. Now going to the design, and here's the home page, how it looked like. Event list and event cards. Maybe I have some comments on the colors here, but again, it's, it looks nice. During an event, this is nice. Privacy setting and invite people because this is very important, especially for those who want to do networks. It looks nice, honestly, and you can click here to, to see the, the prototype, which is interesting. Good case study. And now let's have a look at a case study for someone called Pindar Yusufi. This case study is for Google Translate. And I want to show some specific focus on that case study. As you can see here, this is something that honestly I used a lot, especially when I was in Hong Kong. 
It was really challenging to understand words and this really helped me. So he explaining more about the problem itself and the icons he's using there and how to use them bigger, especially on mobile, things that matter, the focus area and uh, probably ads before and after so he's showing more how it looks before and after honestly now it's looking here it's more complex but now it's looking more simple and friendly game changer nice and here they're showing another screen and when you scroll down it will show like someone who speaks in english and you get the translation for it it's really an interesting way for any conversation that could happen in the future. This is a really interesting analysis for the speech translation usage over time. Like we haven't used that before, um, but now we get, we are using it like as translator, whether by using some devices like the Pixel Buds and other stuff also. Yeah, it is there. Yeah. Cool case study. Nice case study. I want to show you now another case study for someone called Samuel. So his case study about creating and sending social monitoring report easily. And you see how this uh, report really nice background. And when you scroll down, you will find more about the pain points of the case study itself. And how he defined a clear objective and scope of the case study and designing the foundation for a usability interface. Create and save new reports. And when you scroll down, you will see more about uh, sketching that he have done. Uh, making send accessibility and desirable. He's showing more focusing on the card itself, which is looks nice. And he's showing here more uh, animation about what he've done. He's showing more about the chart and how it looks. He's showing like, I guess this is something that you can import and export, like CSV file from data monitoring software. Looks nice, really nice case study. Now we're going to look at this case study for a designer called uh, Lucy. I really like her logo. It represents her name with some shapes. And now she's showing more about her role and the client and how much time it took from her. And when you scroll down, we will see more about the challenge and high level goals and the process that she worked on. And detailing more about each process, like the discovery and how it looked like. Then personas, defining, and when you scroll down, you will see more about the information architecture and the user flow. Scrolling down, you will go more with this ideation. And then the prototype, I guess they have prototype here by Envision. Okay, then validation and user testing and affinity mapping it's showing here more about the cta placement so before it was here now i guess it's sticky i assume that it's sticky and here how it look like scrolling down you will find more about the ui and the style guide she used and here is the prototype. I guess you have a direct link here for the prototype. That's it for this case study. Looks nice. Now let's have a look at another case study. Her name is Kiki. Let's see which one to look at. AeroLab. And here showing the timeline, the rule, and the tools. And more about the challenge itself then the research creation mode cool teacher reviews design the solution so she's showing more about the user flow and then why they were a frame scrolling down you will see more about 
those designs and wireframe. So let's have a look at another case study for someone called Julia. What I like on her case study, the process, how, how she present the process of her case study. I really like the shape uh, for that. And scrolling down, you will see more about uh, the research. Then scrolling down, you will see more here. And you can find more about each persona. And scrolling down, you will find more about the sitemap and uh, the user flow. And also here, the wireframes. Then going with test, repeat, branding, and UI. And as you can see, she have really good UI design elements. Conclusion and next step. Now, before we start, we need to remind ourselves about the persona or the target audience who will look at our UX design case study. Because if you want to be understood, you must speak the language of the listener. And here the listener will be the recruiter or the client.